All right, so how are things, bud? Yeah, all good. Sorry, my cat has to say that he wants to come for a cuddle. That's fine. I mean, there you go. He's cute. What's his name? Him or her? Aleko. Aleko. Love that. The Swedish name. I bet Mal, Mal, uh, yeah. Mal named him. Uh, if it was a, a girl, it was going to be Rogue. And if it was a boy, it was going to be Aleko. <laughs> it was a boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> nicely done nicely done well played buddy well played um so how are things at home yeah all good we um i mean obviously we're both healthy safe no issues that way um Thank families God. back home are all all a-okay so uh yeah we're just using this situation as a bit of an opportunity uh right. to kind of finally raft and graft and graft um to get maybe some of these projects that were kind of just sitting on the back burner or who just got started but literally never got anywhere exactly um, yeah we'll just be moving with time to do that so like this week has all been about um we've just finished like a high protein recipe pack uh, that we're going to essentially put out onto the the market uh, it's like 52 um high protein recipes it's like yeah, that, I mean, the document's like a hundred odd pages. It's got like meal planners and shopping lists and all that stuff in there. So it's, where where do people find this? Where do people find it? So it is going to be on our website, um, and it's also something that's going to be. So we're also in the process of finally laying out a link tree type setup, but it's going to be from our website rather than link tree, nice. just so we have a bit more control over where things go. So if people click on that button, it goes straight to you know, for example, the sales page or whatever else. So uh, the high protein ones first, once we've got all that running and all the back end stuff is doing what it needs to do, then it's super easy to replicate that. So we have a vegan one and a low carb one that we're putting out as well. Um, nice. We'll see how it goes because we've been wanting to do like a bit of a evergreen product type thing that we wanted to ideally put out there for a while. And it's always kind of, you know, coaching gets in the way or the business gets in the way. And of course. We're finally in a position now where we can start rattling out some some good uh products and um and challenges and, and all that sort of stuff so nice um so what's the website again or you're saying just people can get it through instagram yeah so if they just go on betterbodycollective.com website you have it hidden at the moment if you had to go on our website now it would say coming soon but go and check this out so mal has literally spent the last two weeks putting together a, a quite a comprehensive free resource hub um, so if you go on there now and you click on that, it will just kind of take you to this area and you have to give your email and, you know, do the dance with that thing, obviously, of course. And then, of course, uh, but you'll get access to, um, training plans for either male or female, uh, a 12, a, recipe, a small recipe pack with just 12 recipes, a bit of a taster, um, a nutrition calculator where you literally put in all your details and it gives you your custom macros. Um, what else is in there? But there's a bunch of like free stuff in there. Uh, and it's just a way of trying to, during this time period and beyond, give people a bit more value when they kind of initially enter our world before they um, then maybe go, oh, well, maybe I should speak to these guys about coaching or or whatever they, they want from that point. Well, that's amazing, man. So that, so, so that means you guys are staying busy. You guys are not slowing down. You're hustling. Like, you're using this time to your to your advantage. Yeah, and listen, I'm not going to lie, it's tough because we were used to doing a lot more coaching. And, yeah, yep. You know, uh, it would be 100% false to say that, oh, you know, everyone that was an in-person client has been able to step up and just get all the sessions on Zoom. If anything, it's the absolute opposite. I've maybe got three maximum that are doing that. And the rest is, I've kind of set them up with programs, charged them a monthly fee, but now we're in a position where they're two or three weeks down the line and they've not done one of the sessions yet. And yeah. so what they're starting to realize now is, shit, I actually really need that extra accountability because even though I've got everything I need in front of me to do it, I'm not taking the time for myself to go do it. And I think it's interesting at the moment because you probably heard people say, oh, you've got more time than ever now to, to train and to do this. And the thing is, I would say 80% of my clients have got less time than they've ever had. Right. 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 Being at home all the time. And so I, it's, and that's the thing. The distractions are countless now. The distractions at home are countless, and you, I mean, you take you take things easier than you would at work, definitely. 
It's like, oh yeah, you know what? I can get distracted with a YouTube video, or like I can watch the end of this movie, and before you know it, like, and you'll be like, hey, I'll do it later on in the day, and before you know it, it's like Fuck, the whole day's gone. And uh, but yeah, like I've fallen prey to that as well, so I understand where you're coming from with that. But yeah, ninety percent. And- how disciplined people really think they are versus how disciplined they actually are. That's what's really shining a spotlight on. This, this is this is the true test of it. And uh, I mean, me and uh, me and me and my wife, we we just decided we're like, you know what, we're going to do the early mornings. We're going to you know stop doing the because now it's like you know what, hey, we can work till four in the night. We can work till five in the night. There's no meetings in the morning. There's no going to office at like, it. So we we ended up staying up to like four or five in the morning, and we we're like, shit, this is like totally. Uh, a whole new level and then we just started waking up at like six in the morning and it's like okay things are getting down to like we're trying to get discipline discipline we got to do eight hours of work and then we do whatever the hell we want after that that's the that's the new rule in the house yeah i yeah. think that's a good way to do it we've got giving ourselves a, a timeline about how, how long we can keep doing the you know early morning to eight at night kind of going 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 and i think once we've got things up to just the point where we need it we'll start to take a bit more foot off the gas or my plan is I'm going to start a podcast in a couple of weeks. So yeah. uh, to switch to the things that are maybe a bit more, um, a bit more social, a bit more content focused versus being so business and brain intensive. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, yourself, there's only so long you can push that envelope before you got to take a step back. So a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you know, and, and that's something that we faced as well. I mean, there's only a handful of people or a handful of people, but like, you know, you would say like 10, 15 people in the, in, in Dubai or the UAE that you really want to interview and who've reached that level, especially in like the fields that we're in. Um, unfortunately me and you haven't got on a podcast before, but I mean, here's to the first one, first interview we're doing together or first chat we're doing together. Um, but yeah, there's only like, a, like 10, 15, 20 people that I would actually be interested in talking to and, and actually knowing uh, more about them. So essentially, I think the, the key things that we just don't have access to anymore is the ability to, to increase intensity or to add load to the same degree that we once had because we just don't have access to the barbells, the plates, the machines, the cables. Um, certainly all I have access to is a set of Bowflex dumbbells. They range from oh. two kilos up to 24 kilos. Um, and that's my lot. That's all I've got to play with. I've got bands, I've got different handles, I've got TRX. So uh, we've got a Reebok step. So, I mean, to be honest, we can do a hell of a lot with that. So we, could. You know, we, we went back to my coach, Callum, uh, Callum Rystrick of the Muscle Mentors and just said, right, well, Listen, we're planning to continue pushing forward. And actually, this might be a good time now to maybe do a wee bit of a refocus of goals and go through a bit of a tidy up phase because now that we're literally in one place all the time, our meat's going to drop. We're not going to be just moving spontaneously as much because we physically can't. You can't go outside. You can't go for long walks. Yeah. We're not on the floor to any clients. So let's use this as a phase to drop calories down, to keep activity from training high, but we just can't really progress those maybe mechanical loading stimulus stimulus that we once were able to do. So our training essentially looks like still using weight, still using bands, still using all the principles, but we're using a lot of um, time sets and time on retention rather than reps and really like trying to increase load week to week. We've kind of kept loads in a very steady place for like four or five weeks. So it might be just give you an example. Um, doing like a wall squat with a foam roller. You've probably seen tons of people doing this on social media recently. So about the closest you'll get to a hack squat and then yeah. actually being in the gym. Um, and so we'll do like, for example, maybe a, a 60 second isometric hold in that position with the weight so, okay. uh, out the roller. So pre-fatigue with that isometric and then stand up, grab the dumbbells again, and then go through three zero three zero tempo. Oh. Just like really slow eccentrics, really slow concentrics oh. uh, for 60 seconds and then 70 seconds the next week, 80 seconds. And then once you're able to top out at 90, the weight goes up a little bit and then you start back at the bottom again. So we're kind of using um, this idea of creating as much intramuscular tension as we physically can and really focusing on that real intent and using that time under load as a progression variable rather than um, the, just adding reps of weight each week so that's kind of where our trainings change mostly we don't have access to the heavy loads and we're not really focused as much on reps and load anymore it's much more about that that right, real right. stimulus under tension right 
And I mean, a lot of people don't realize, but uh, that, I mean, when, when you, you look, look at the old, old like uh, videos with like what, Vince Gironda and uh, Charles Polkman and stuff, they did a ton of time under tension stuff, like just playing around with the loading parameters, right? Like less rest, high, high, like higher time under tension, playing around with the explosiveness, rep sets, tempo, and like all, all that kind of stuff. Well, it, now it comes to light, and I, and I know senior coaches like yourself are all are going to take advantage of that, and you're probably programming that into your clients as well. Um, but yeah, they can be they can be um, as effective, if not more effective, because uh, I mean, people are training those uh, small, tiny muscles that they didn't work on before, the stabilizing muscles that they didn't work on before, and now is a really good chance. Uh, yeah, a really great idea. I'm glad you brought that up. Like that's that's huge. Because I do it, I, I do it without thinking about it. But you just brought it up. Yeah, it's just isometrics. Um, people just think of it as a, re a thing you do for rehab. Uh, and then just ask someone to keep doing these isometrics for all these holds before they do their sets and stuff. It is just diabolical. And like you okay. said, it's going to create a lot of that structural balance. It's going to iron out a lot of the kinks that a lot of people might have in their current training. And when they go back into the gym, I'm actually excited going back into the gym as, right. a, as right. a better athlete than when I came out. Because I've taken the time to focus on those things, like you said, that just tend to maybe get neglected or pushed to the side. So it's, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting time. Yep. Um, so for example, the best example I give in my own plan at the moment is uh, we have to do a push up, a banded push up. So you've got a band around the back just for that extra tension at the top. You have to hold the middle position midway down for like a minute. And then you have to go into a set of three seconds down, one second pause, three seconds up. I couldn't finish, I couldn't, well, I could finish the isometric, but by the time I got to the, the actual working set, it took me two or three rests, take a second back, I, I, could, I, can't, I still can't finish a minute. Wow. And then there's another session that I do without the isometric and it's just the band and I can finish minute one, maybe 70 seconds and then set two, like after 30, 40 seconds with that tempo and that much intent. It's, I mean, I've, I've always been, very big on because I've had to do this for clients in the past depending on different circumstances like it's amazing how hard a, a good old humble push-up can be if you do it properly um, and it's just kind of highlighted that to me shit I used to be really good at push-ups at all tempos and now I'm really not so yeah it's definitely been humble to and you're ex crossfit too right and you're an ex crossfitter regional crossfitter right yeah so I used to be able to knock out push-ups for days but no this is a uh, horrendous <laughs> uh, I guess the first one is is just to not underestimate the stuff you're doing at home because you know and I've seen this a lot with um, my clients and also with you know, some of my coaches clients who I also keep an eye on social media and, and also just across the interwebs in general people are switching from the stuff they're doing in the gym going back home and they're like oh my god I am so freaking sore I am in so much pain what they forget is that like this period of training is such a novel stimulus. Um, so don't underestimate just how effective this phase of training is going to be. And I guess the biggest practical application of that is just not to think that you're going to now just do tons of volume to make up for all the weight you're not lifting. Um, I would just say be very careful about how you manage volume. The same principles still apply. Minimum effective dose or maximum returns. Um, and really figure out what that baseline is first and then build off that rather than just going, right, bodyweight training, gah! And I suppose what you're seeing a lot across social media now is there's a lot of coaches feeling they need to all of a sudden do these, right, let's do these high intensity or these like, you know, CrossFit style workouts. And it's just absolutely beasting people, no individualization. It's just, right, well, this is going to, and you're hearing all these words, you're going to just get a great sweat on, you're going to get really, really tired and everything else. And it's kind of yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. is the goal of training to get really, really tired or is it to get an effective response to the training? Uh, so I think that's just something people should keep in mind. Um, second it's thing coffee, would probably be, some whiskey. Uh, is it coffee? Nice, good. <laughs> is it a bit late for coffee? Uh, it's past eight, Ray. It's not for me. <laughs> Do you metabolize quick? Dude, I am caffeine resistant to the max. Anyways, it's not a good thing to say, but hey. No, Miles like that as well. She has no problem. Well, doesn't she doesn't feel like she has any problems? And she can have it at six o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night, no problems. Um, 
Yeah, the second thing would be it's a, it's a fantastic time for people to take the time for themselves from things like mobility, breath work, uh, meditation. And a lot of people will often neglect those things, especially your hardcore people, because of course the priority is making that progress from week to week in the gym and seeing those numbers go up and beating the logbook. But, um, you know, one thing I found from going from CrossFit where I was doing so much mobility and really looking after myself to going into physique and then just thinking, oh, I can just let that stuff slide as all the niggles and the little aches that I started picking up and all the mobility I started to lose by not doing it. Correct. Um, and so I've kind of really reflected during this time to like, right, well, I don't want to feel the way my joints and my body feels at the moment. So I'm going to get the same mobility back that I used to have before and feel really good again. Um, so I'm taking the time to do the mobility work. So I would urge people to, if you've never been someone who's been into mobility, um, now's probably a good time to try and implement that especially kind of later on in the day to try and wind down because uh, yeah. people don't realize that yoga and mobility rolling is such a good parasympathetic inducing aid. Um, so that's maybe the second thing to think about. Um, and then I think the third, which is probably more relevant to my population and my clients that I coach a lot of is um, if you're, if you're very concerned, cause I mean, there's a lot of talk at the moment about, oh no, I'm going to lose all my gains. Like, you know, because I'm training at home and I don't have access to the gym. Well, if you're really interested in keeping a hold of your muscle tissue, at least maintaining it during this period, then doing a shit ton of cardio is probably not a great idea during this period. Um, so I'd probably say like, if your thought is right, I need to now do a shit ton of cardio either daily or bi daily or whatever else in order to offset this lack of activity or whatever else, I would just say reconsider because there's much smarter ways to to go about coming out the other side of this, a, a better person and healthier and fitter. And, or at the very least for a lot of people, it's just going to be a case of a well -rounded. maintain the best you can. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally, I totally agree with you 150%. So you're saying don't, don't underestimate, don't underestimate the home workout, work on your mobility, um, and breathing, uh, and hold on to your muscles, uh, in a smarter way and don't do a shit ton of cardio. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, because that, I think that's pretty much what everyone has access to, right? Jumping jacks, skipping rope, uh, some many people have a treadmill at home and uh, an elliptical and stuff. I mean, uh, doing a few rounds of some hit training at the end of your workout might not hurt, but just don't go like one hour walking on the treadmill, one hour like running on the treadmill, thinking that, you know, and then you worry about where your biceps went. Yeah, I mean, and listen, don't get me wrong, I think, um, and I, I've made a big point to say this on a lot of our lives and a lot of the posts I've made about this recently, that listen, I'm speaking to this demographic, but if you're like an endurance athlete or whatever else, well, first of all, you probably should still be concerned about holding on to some condition, um, but course that that type of advice is not going to be as relevant to them because they need to do their their aerobic work and everything else but um but it's also i would say for a lot of the guys who do a lot of endurance stuff it's a great time to increase the amount of cross training that you were maybe yeah. not doing before because I've, I've worked with so many endurance people in the past where they just don't do any resistance training um and a lot of them say well you know i just don't want to get too heavy or or they're just scared of doing it because they've maybe got hurt lots of times trying it in the past uh, and I think now is a great time to kind of use the home environment as a way to kind of just dabble and creep into some cross training mixed up yeah. with the, the endurance stuff. I mean, everyone has a set of five kilo dumbbells at home, right? Somewhere. Something. Something. They got something they can they got, they got like something. a freaking water. Yeah. Something. I dabble in it. You know, it's uh, the world's your oyster. The house is your oyster right now. Um, Anyways, Ross, uh, we're running out of time, so I wanna so I wanna cut this short. I wanna try to keep this on IGTV. So, um, sixteen minutes, and I think we're hitting like the twenty three minute. So, uh, thank you so much for uh, talking to us. And uh, where can people find more information about you? Um, for me personally, it's at Coach Ross Gilmore on Instagram, and for the company page at Better Body Collective. Awesome. I'll see you around. Thank you so much for your time. Stay strong and stay healthy.